Hey, what's going on, Paranormal World? I'm back again with another Ghost Adventure episode review. And the name of this episode is Mountains of Oaks Mayhem. And the location is in none other than California, of course. <laughs> but the episode opens up with Zach Bagans explaining that he received a message from a family member about how their family has been affected from this house and, you know, family members have fought, cried, and even some have moved out over the past 60 years, I guess, because the house is 60 years old. Well, they bought the house 60 years ago, so it's a fairly old house, but anyway, and specifically, the siblings of this household didn't get along during these 60 years, and they had a lot of drama and a lot of jealousy and greed went on. But the thing about this house is that the son's bedroom has a lot of paranormal activity going on and it even made him move out at the age of 18. But I don't know if I believe that fully considering that when you're 18 and then we already see that they had a lot of greed and jealousy going on within um, his sister and him. I mean... They, pr they probably kicked him out the house. But that's what I view it as. And Zach Bagans called it a multi-layer case. But like I mentioned earlier, it has been a lot of chaos between these family members going on. And it could just be a cop-out for the family real problems and blaming it on the ghost. And, you know, it seems like it's a lot of mental issues going on, specifically with the son. And, um... It just seems like they're blaming it on the ghost. And we see this way too often with paranormal movies and even paranormal documentaries. Just like the whole Cecil Hotel thing. It's, it's a lot of mental people that go to that hotel and do crazy things, commit suicide and so forth. Specifically like the Elisa Lamb situation. Um, I don't want to get into a big story about that, but... I personally feel like she had a mental illness and she went up to the water tower and committed suicide. That's how I feel. But, you know, back to this, Linda, the woman they interviewed, gave her backstory and she was very emotional. And she is the sister of the whole story I was talking about with her and her brother not getting along. But anyway, her and her brother are still on bad terms. And it was also mentioned that someone else who stayed in that same exact room experienced everything the brother did. Like someone watching them and holding them down, not being able to sleep. And also they said that fires were being set in the house on their own and beds being thrown. And I, and I was like, that sounds like some stuff beyond poltergeist activity. And get this tidbit. Linda's father was a Los Angeles Sheriff officer and he basically transported Charles Manson and Charles Manson tried to bribe him to break him out of jail but he turned it down and I guess they tried to tie that into this house because I guess they trying to say that Charles Manson is still taking out his anger on that family or whatever but that's kind of confusing, but it was very interesting when Zach Bagans brought up that point because that is a big coincidence that this family is tied to Charles Manson. Maybe in a small way, but, you know, it's still a connection there. And I was very intrigued that, at that point. But the only thing is, Charles Manson died a couple of years ago, so I don't understand why the house was being hunted for all those years. But the first initial walkthrough starts with a little comic relief. Zach had seen a, a clown doll sitting on a bed and he was like, you, you got to move that. That clown is evil. <laughs> and I got a chuckle out of that. But as they continued to walk around, they found this Ouija board and Zach tried to force Aaron to play. And Aaron was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. You better get someone else. I'm not going to do it. And Zach was like, no, Aaron, come on down. And Aaron actually put his foot down for once and said, no, I'm not doing it. And there's been several incidences in this episode where Aaron put his foot down and said, no, I'm not doing that. Or you coming here with me when I do it. And Zach was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but, you know, the good for Aaron for actually putting his foot down. Maybe he watched one of my previous videos. I talked about that. So after Zach was done playing with the Ouija board, he feels like he opened up something demonic in the house and they pull out the EMF detector, which spiked at a six. And then Zach is trying to act all crazy as usual. He's stomping his foot and he's screaming and he says he doesn't feel good and he, he goes outside. But then, you know, the official lockdown begins and Aaron and I think Billy went through the house and, you know, they're searching and everything and the XLS camera captured a figure. 
But y'all know how I feel about the XLS camera. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's real. And that's just how I feel. Leave a like down below if you feel the same way I feel about the XLS camera. I don't really like it. And too much technology is just destroying these paranormal shows. Just get back to the basics. Overall, this episode was very random. And honestly, I joke about it all the time. But it seems like they're running out of locations, literally. And it's obvious. And one particular evidence they did capture, and I thought it was compelling, was when the night vision turned off by itself on one of the cameras. And you could hear the clicking back and forth, like that was a spirit or something messing with the camera. And I thought that was compelling and it was creepy. And I feel like it was more compelling than anything in that previous episode that Zach Bagans was claiming that that was the most compelling evidence that they captured. <laughs> but nonetheless, man, um... Let me know down below in the comment section. How do you feel about this episode? Um, did you like it? Did you dislike it? What do you think about the history between Charles Manson and the father um, of the family? Did you find that interesting? Do you think Charles Manson actually had a connection to that household? Or do you think it was something else there? Also, if you love paranormal discussions like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button so you can see every time I upload. As always, be safe. Peace.